Hello everyone, it's Quick Flash, um, and I'm here today to talk about some new code that has made its way into Emu Fight. Now if any of you guys are big gamers, you're going to be really excited about this. As you can see, we've added a Half-Life integral, the integral Half-Life into Emu Fight. So if any of you are big gaming fans, you'll already know about Half-Life and everything that that can bring to the software. Um, actually, I'm kidding. Um, the name Half-Life has nothing to do with the video game Half-Life. Um, yeah, I just thought that was kind of funny. Anyways, um, yeah, the integral Half-Life is actually a way of changing the way that we compute the integral code within Emu Flight. Now, how we're doing that is the integral Half-Life is actually a leaky integrator. Now, as you can see here, a leaky integrator is an equation, and blah, blah, blah. It's essentially, as we can read here, a first order low pass filter. Now you might be wondering why would I want to put a first order low pass filter on my integral term? And if and if you didn't know, a PT1 is a first order low pass filter. Why would you want to put a low pass filter on the integral term? It doesn't make sense. Well, actually <coughs> it's kind of neat. Let me go back to this picture. Um what it does is the um leaky integral means that we can give the integral a quote-unquote half-life. Um, so, if you know what a half-life is, you know, if we're talking about nuclear... I can't think of the word, but just nuclear compounds, they have a half-life. So after a certain amount of time, it will have decayed, you know. And so, for instance, in this, in Emufite right here, a half-life of 10, this unit is in 0.1 seconds, so 10 is 1 second. This integral half-life means that after one second, the previous I-term values are worth half of what they used to be. So, for instance, the way that we compute the integral term or the I-term, because the I-term is an integral, for those of you that know calculus, the way we calculate this is we take the error, multiply it by the time, so we get the time frame and the error, and then we add that to the current integral term. So that's why you hear that the I term grows slowly and shrinks slowly. And that's because it adds to itself. Whereas the proportional, the P, and the derivative, D, they're calculated on the fly. So every PID loop, it's recalculated, whereas the integral term, it has history. And currently, the history of the integral term is your entire flight. As soon as you arm to when you disarm, the integral term is the addition of all the, um, yeah, it's the addition of all the error. Um, and if you were to look at it on a graph, the integral term is literally the area under the curve for your error. So anytime your quadcopter has error, the integral term will be growing or shrinking. And currently, it sums up the whole flight worth of error data in order to calculate that. The way that it does it here with this integral half-life is we basically put, like I said, a low-pass filter on the integral term. What that does is if this is set to 10, after one second, because that's what 10, that's the units, is 0.1 seconds, so 100 would be 10 seconds. But anyways, after this time frame, the error, not the error, but the integral terms from the past so the data one second ago that was added to the integral term if we're using 10, the data that was added a second ago, is now only half as strong as the data added right now. And so that means that the integral term is more based on the newer data, and it starts to ignore older data. So newer data comes in, it gives it full, you know, the newest data comes in, it listens to it just like it would if you set, if you set this to zero, it turns it off. So if you turn this off, and, you know, that first newest data coming in is treated like normal. <laughs> After that, that data that you just put in, it now be it starts to become older as time moves on. And this code will make its effect less and less. And what this kind of does, which is kind of cool, is it actually makes the integral term start to act like a P term. <laughs> because actually, if you made the half-life infinitely small, then 
this would, in fact, turn your integral term into your p term or your proportional. Um, and so as you make the integral term smaller and smaller, it makes this more like a kind of like a p term mixed with an i term. That can give you some kind of cool effects. Um, and now something else we're messing with because we're doing a lot with i term. Andre's been really awesome lately. He's been testing a lot of code trying to figure out exactly how to get i term working the best. Um, so we've added some code that the name's going to get changed later. We've just added names that don't make sense right now so that we can get better unbiased testing. So anyways, this quick flash relax, it's kind of similar to what the iTerm relax was that used to be in the code. And I say kind of similar, we, I've tweaked it just a little bit. It's pretty close, it's been tweaked a little bit. Um, you'll notice there's three different versions. Um, one version is what I came up with, and two of them are <laughs> the versions that used to be in beta flight, but like I said, slightly tweaked a little. Um, and yeah, so we're messing with this as well. And that brings me to this point here. Um, this is where beta flight's talking about I term relax, <laughs> which I've changed it just a little bit, so it's gonna be a little different. But don't let that worry you. <laughs> Anyways, right here. Talks about known drawbacks of using iTerm Relax. And I'll just show this example because it shows it. It talks about, okay, so with iTerm Relax, it, under certain circumstances, it can lock your iTerm and tell it not to grow. Now, that can be useful in certain circumstances. Um, I'm not the greatest fan of just locking up the iTerm um, when you don't need to, but can be useful and that's why I've kind of tweaked it a little bit and I think with this um, leaky integral or integral half-life um, along with the slightly tweaked iTerm relax that we won't need to ever quite do a full lock of the iTerm maybe just slow it down um, anyways I'll hopefully this will make things make more sense so anyways if I can open up this image so that you guys can see that. So this white line here, that's your eye term. This is this other line is the gyro. Uh, actually it might not be the gyro. Yeah, I don't know what that line is. Uh, this is probably P term or something. So my guess is so this is I term this right here is your gyro, and this is your set point. <laughs> so you can see that he must have been doing a flip because this dotted line is center stick. So he was just doing a flip, pulled it back to center. What you can see here is that when he moved the stick up, <laughs> which is what he did here, the P term shoots up to push the quad. Now, the integral term has some time to start growing because there's all this error. So the error is the difference between these two lines. There's all this error. The integral term starts to grow. At this point here, it locks. The <coughs> term relax code has locked the growth of um, the I term. It's just it's held it in place. And then... This line here is about when the flip ends. But look, you have all this built up I term. <coughs> so you see this, it causes a little bounce back. So you have all this built up I term that then shrinks after that little bounce. All that built up I term. <coughs> so, something great about the leaky integral. So if they were using a leaky integral here, it would have built up, it would have gotten locked, but then because the integral doesn't care about all the history, it cares about the more recent history more, this would actually still start to decay. Because recent history says it's locked. <coughs> and because of that, it's not changing. And so the recent history isn't that it should grow more. 
it'll just decay. And so that would be quite nice here because instead of the line being straight across, it would actually start to come down. And by doing that, this bounce back that's I-term related right here, it would kind of disappear because you'd have this shrinking before you get out of this I-term locked zone. And with a leaky integral, you'd never quite be able to really lock your integral. You could just lock it from growing or shrinking normally and just let the leakiness of the integrator or the integral take over. And so basically, yeah, what the leaky integral would be able to do is it looks at the past. And it looks at it less and less. So the recent history, it uses a lot. Older history, it uses less. Um... And like I said, it's just a low-pass filter. And the easiest way to think of that is every time your PIDs are recalculated, we just put a multiplier on the I-term sum or the integral. So the I-term sum would be all of this added up because every loop you add a little bit or subtract a little bit to the I-term, but then you, you just add or subtract that to the I-term sum. And so by putting this multiplier on the sum, since that multiplier is less than 1, it will slowly shrink your integral term. It'll slowly shrink it. And that can actually be quite useful. Because <clears throat> like I said here, in this case, it would start shrinking it down, down, down. And so this would be acting more like, a little bit more like a p-term, because the p-term shoots up here, it shoots up as well. It's a little delayed, but it shoots up as well then it would start to shrink more. And if you had a lot more integral term, so that it could react a lot quicker, it would start acting more and more like a p-term. If you had the, um, the decay higher, it would decay faster. And so it would act quite a lot more like an integrated term. <coughs> so the leaky integral combines, kind of combines the p-term and the i-term. And the way that you're able to tune that is with this integral half-life, and the half-life is the amount of time that it takes before old values are now worth half of what they used to be. So if the default, which is 10 for now, it, it's probably going to change later, but the default for now is 10, um, that'll be one second. So after a second, that integral data is now worth half what the new data coming in is. Hope that made sense. Um, yeah, we've got that. We have the integral half-life. We have the integral half-life for yaw. Um, and so you can tweak them separately. I don't think yaw needs as much because yaw is already quite nice and crisp in emu flight. So um, play with this as you will. Like I said, you set it to zero. It disables it. Um, something to note is with this code, we've disabled most of the I-term checks. Um, by that, we had some code called dyne ci or anyways it's just like a dynamic i term kind of thing whereas the motor output became saturated you know your motors started maxing out um basically you had lock up because you couldn't raise or lower your motors anymore um anyways that would start to shrink the i term growth or decay it would, yeah, it would just inhibit how much I term could change. Um, we've basically gotten rid of that. So if you run your integral half life at zero, um, you're, you're going to run into problems. You know, your I term is going to be acting worse. You're going to be getting more bounce back because we've removed some other stuff just to test this, really get a feel for it. But with a lower half life, you don't see as much of that. And then with this new, kind of slightly tweaked I term relax. I've not been seeing these problems either. Um, using a combination of this leaky integral, this integral half-life, and this new relaxed code, um, I've had a whoop that for the longest time I always had a bit of bounce back on it. Didn't seem like there was anything I could do. Put this on there, tweaks the settings a little bit, and now I don't get bounce back. It flies incredible. So I'm liking this. Um, and I really think that this integral half-life combined with this slightly tweaked relaxed code can 
you know, get rid of the, right here, it can get rid of these known drawbacks that I term relax can cause and get it to work better. Now, the way that you set up the change I term relax, it says quick flash here, um, just because it's just a placeholder for now. Um, you'll see these different modes, hard flex, unicorn, juicy, and off. Off turns off the relax. Um, the way I've coded it, you can have different relax values for pitch and roll, and yaw is separated. Um, you've probably seen that's just a common thing that I do, is I like the way yaw flies in emu flight, and tweaking pitch and roll settings can kind of mess with that. And yaw already flies amazing in emu flight, so tweak it how you will. Um, basically, this relax value here and this cutoff. So you might just be used to a bunch of different type things for um, I term relax and then just a cutoff. Um, I've done it slightly different. Um, so these are actually settings I ended up using. It's 20 um, and 8 here, which is different than the default. But um, this cutoff relates to a low pass filter that is then used to calculate the I term relax type math. And so the lower the cutoff, the sooner the I term relax will start to take effect and lock up your I term. This relax value is how big that relax has to kind of get before it locks up. <coughs> so by that, you have a cutoff, which is frequency in hertz. So depending on your version being hard flex unicorn or juicy, I'm not going to say what the differences are there. I just want you to test it and see for yourself. Um, but based on that, we'll send some data through a filter, and it comes out a high-pass filter. So only, when I set it to 8 hertz, only data that's greater than 8 hertz gets let through this filter. So low frequency data, data below 8 hertz, it gets killed and only the higher data gets passed through. And this relax value is kind of how much of that data needs to get through. So the larger you set this, the more data needs to get through before you get a full lock. <coughs> and to me, playing with this number kind of makes more sense than playing with the cutoff because um, I can see finding kind of the right cutoff for everything um, and then we just adjust kind of the absolute value of you know just the total amount of data the total amount of noise getting through is what this kind of deals with and this deals with what frequencies we're letting through so if you set it for lower frequencies then you know it'll allow smaller movements and changes to affect it more and if you increase this more it needs more aggressive and sharper moves because the sharper moves are higher frequencies um, yeah so I think that combining I think that we'll be able to find a nice cutoff value that'll be pretty good and then just playing with this relax which is kind of the total sum of you know the data getting through this filter um, yeah and so it's set differently for um, you know, pitch and roll, and then yaw. And, yeah, those are your basic values there. Um, play with it a bit. Um, let me know what you think of it. Um, yeah, try the different hard flex unicorn and juicy mode. Let me know which one's the best. I'm not going to tell you what they are. But just go out and test it. And something nice that I've done is all of this is in the OSD under the PID tab. It's kind of messy in there right now. I want to change it later. But I just wanted to quickly get this out there and not spend a bunch of effort on it. So the integral half-life and the I-term relax stuff, it'll be called I-relax in the OSD. Um, you can even change your type in the OSD. So you can go from hard flex to unicorn to juicy or even turn it off. Um, and then, yeah, this integral half-life, you can 
mess with that as well. So overall, I'd like some feedback on this, like your testing on it. Um, hopefully this will be an improvement to the way that I term functions with an emu fight. Um, if so, I think we'll have made a big step forward. Um, so far, I'm quite liking it. I think this could, you know, just get our craft to fly even better. So go out and give it a try. Come up with some good default values. Find out which of these three modes you prefer. And yeah, thanks for helping test and have a good one.